Episode number four of The Anthony Anderson Show is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com. That's 1-800-HOT-COIN. And Mezzy Grill. That's mezzygrill.com. And mountgox.com. That's mtgox.com. Hey, everybody. This is Anthony coming at you live from New York City. And I have a very special guest today. And this guest is not only a... Um, in my opinion, a leader in the field, but also a really good friend. So her name is Debbie Young, and Hi. she's joining us from Pasadena, California today. Uh, hey, let me, hey, Deb, how you doing, sister? <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, so Deb, well, I, I want you to tell your story. Um, you've, you have a really interesting path that's very inspirational, and it's really a good lesson in self-teaching and self-exploration. So if you want to just give us a little rundown about yourself, and then we'll go from there. Okay, well, um, I am a mom and a stepmom of two beautiful girls, 120 and 110, and um, I, uh, my, by trade, I am in the beauty industry. I. I've uh, been a hairdresser for a long time. Matter of fact, I'm your personal hairdresser. It Anthony. is true. This is true. <laughs> and uh, I chose to stay at home uh, with my daughter when she was about a year old. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since then, I've been very active and involved. And I had a checkup when I was about 47 um, and found out that I have a form of leukemia. It's called chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And um, at the time, I was in a really sort of a high stress part of my life, had been through a lot of loss and, and uh, just a lot of things going on and uh, didn't handle that all that well when I found that out uh, and was mostly concerned that I wouldn't be around for my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, the prognosis, it's, it's, a, it's a form of leukemia that's very slow moving and my doctor, my oncologist, said all the markers were good, but yet he gave me a prognosis of seven to ten years of life. Mm -hmm. uh, having a six-year-old at the time, it, it's just, it just was not, I couldn't even fathom not being here yeah. uh, for her. Yeah. Um, so I started entering what I like to call cancer college. I went on Google, I went online, I read every book, I tried everything to heal myself and see if I could figure out what would work to bring me back to a healthy state of being. And um, about six months after I got diagnosed, I started um, on a raw vegan diet. And that's uh, one of the reasons I got to meet you, mm -hmm. which is uh, wonderful, and a lot of mm -hmm. amazing people in my life that yeah. are still in my life. And uh, by adopting the raw diet, and the specifically raw vegan diet, Within five months, I was able to reduce my white blood cell count in half. Okay. It still wasn't normal, but it went from about 29,000, which is about triple normal, to about 15,000. How did you feel when you got those results? Oh, I was ecstatic. Yeah. You know, um, when you get a diagnosis like this, you kind of go from a high to a low. In, in other words, you get hope from something. And then all of a sudden you'll read something else that says, well, most people with this disease die within two to five years and, and mm -hmm. you dissolve into mm -hmm. tears. And for me, it wasn't an option to just take what the doctor gave me. There's no treatment. There's no cure. So it was all on me. And that's really the hidden blessing in all of it. Uh, through, the, through raw veganism, when I... When I saw that I was getting better, I just went further and further along. And at about the two-year mark, with really steady good blood tests, I decided to kick it up and kind of uh, really went hardcore and did a lot of things that, in retrospect, I think actually ended up damaging my health. Uh -huh. uh, and so after six months, my blood test actually got worse. I was, in my opinion, underweight. Um, I had lost fat, but I lost a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. and at my age and and with my illness it's not that's not a good thing uh, so I sort of again went uh, back to the search and tried to find new ideas about healing and new things that maybe I had sort of shunned from the raw vegan standpoint right and so um, that's sort of like where it all started mm-hmm Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, How, what was so. the entry? Why did you choose raw veganism as your first um, new dietary style after your diagnosis? 
That's a good question. I, I, I investigated macrobiotics and I found that that, even though I bought all the, the beans and the rice and I just, it just didn't resonate with me. Um, I uh, discovered a lot of the things I discovered were online. Um, I discovered through Chris Carr's book, Crazy Sexy Cancer, she's a, a very strong advocate of the vegan and raw vegan uh, diet, juicing, mm -hmm. um, wheatgrass, things of that sort. And also the other side of it, which is meditation and taking care of your body and your, and your emotional state. Mm -hmm. and reducing your stress level, I think that was also key for me. Um, doing meditation, doing affirmations, doing uh, affirmations meaning visualizations of, my favorite one I'll, I'll share with you is that I'm 100 years old and there's a huge party in Griffith Park and all my children are there, my grandchildren, hopefully great grandchildren, mm -hmm. and we're going to go on a hike and I'm leading it, and no one can keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I would visualize things like that, um, visualize about every 10 years. What am I going to do when I'm 70? What am I going to do when I'm 80, yeah. uh, 90, 100? Um, I usually stopped at 100 because I didn't want to get too greedy, you know. Right. Um, but um, through Chris's work, and then I branched out into things like Jamil uh, Pruitt's uh, Give It To Me Raw, We Like It Raw, Side to your side, Anthony, uh, my friend uh, Alyssa um, with Bueller's Kitchen, yeah. just sort of kept making friends, making friends, went to Raw Spirit uh, to see Chris speak, met you and, and many others um, that influenced me, mm -hmm. and just, you know, kept trying to find out what was the optimal diet, and I have to admit, for a while I felt great. But by the end, by, the, by probably around the, the two, two and a half year mark, I started having a lot, a lot of problems besides the blood count. Mm -hmm. I had digestive issues. I had skin issues horribly. Um, I had a red rash around my mouth and my eyes. Actually, when I met you, I had it. Uh, that would mm -hmm. not go away. And now that I'm in, in retrospect, I really believe it was some kind of vitamin deficiency, um, perhaps or even say spirulina or something, I've heard of certain foods that I was eating a lot of causing this type of rash. Huh. Um, I had, you know, like I said, gotten too thin. Uh, in my opinion, I was having um, a lot of digestive trouble. Um, so I, I really feel now that my gut was not functioning correctly. I think I had done such a clean out that I cleaned it out completely. and and got rid of even my good bacteria. And so, you were, but weren't you taking probiotics? Uh, at that time, I wasn't um, really uh, hardcore into probiotics. I think uh, a little bit here and there. But mm -hmm. because I wasn't using dairy uh, or, or anything fermented, really, no, not as much as I probably should have. That okay. probably would have helped quite a bit. What, was your, um, what kind of styles of raw veganism did you get into? Um, well, I started off, uh, I would call it more of a healing style. In other words, focusing on green smoothies, focusing on juicing, focusing on um, veggies. And there's, a, there's a, an interesting thing that happens in the vegan world. You, you have your you know, 30 bananas a day people that are very high on fruit. Matter of fact, say fruit should be most of what you eat mm -hmm. and lower fat. And then you've got another side that is a little bit more about, you know, stay away from sugar. You have cancer. Sugar feeds cancer. And I kept hearing that over and over and over. And so uh, for a time, I, and you know this, I would go through periods where I would just say, I'm not having any fruit. I'm not eating anything sweet. I get rid of my dates and my cacao and everything, mm -hmm. frankly, that I love and honey. And, and yeah. to be honest, I really don't feel that that is a factor, at least for me. Okay. Uh, I feel like for me, I'm a very active person. I do a lot of um, physical activity. I have a very active life with my daughter who's 10. And I burn up carbs and, and sugary th fruits and things like no problem. Okay. Digest them really well, never have any issues, um, feel great, you know, so... I have come to believe through the work of Ray Pete, who's a, a scientist, a researcher, he actually 
says that cancer cells actually feed on protein. And if you think about a person in an advanced stage of cancer, you don't look at them and, and notice anything more than that they look rather skeletal, mm -hmm. emaciated. Well, so what is the cancer eating? Is it eating carbs or is it eating the protein, the muscle of wow. that of that person? Wow. So his theory is, or his belief is, that by providing your carbs and sugars to your system when you have cancer, you actually prevent the cancer from attacking your organs, your muscle, and your vital uh, parts of your body. And you're, you're not feeding it as much as you're keeping it from, from seeking food, if that makes sense. And um, so uh, have, you, uh, have you lowered the protein then? Uh, well, at first, when I, when I first went off of raw vegan, I, I went into um, colostrum, raw dairy, a few things, and then I started adding in bison and things. So I was a little bit more into the red meat side at first. Uh -huh. um, these days, my main source of, of protein has to, I would say, be dairy, um, fermented dairy, raw dairy, or um, fish, so, uh, seafood. Type of stuff. What kinds and of seafood? Much. Sorry. What kinds of seafood? Um, I usually go for salmon, all wild caught salmon, uh, shrimp. Again, wild caught. I don't eat anything farmed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very against factory farming of any kind. Uh, so uh, things that are basically sustainable and and not going to, you know, cause problems with uh, supply. I like sardines. Okay. I, <laughs> I don't blame you. Anthony grilled me some sardines that were just phenomenal, and I was hooked. Yeah, that uh, was good. That it, was, yeah. I tried oysters for the first time the other night with uh, Anne-Marie Michaels from Cheese Slave, and that was pretty good. I, I said, it tastes like the ocean, only chewy. <laughs> that, that was pretty, pretty yummy. Um, but I keep it simple. I, I yeah. tend to eat really simple. I eat fairly light. Um, and, uh, I, I mean, I have to say I feel better than ever. I'm 52 years old and, you know, hoping that I will get my dream. My 100-year birthday party is, is what I'm aiming for. So. And what are your numbers like at the moment? At the moment, they're steady. They're so steady, it's, it's kind of strange. I get tested every six months now. When I started on RAW, uh, when I first got diagnosed, they wanted me there every two months. And that's rough. Uh -huh. and, and so I kept pushing my oncologist to let me go, let me go. And once he saw my numbers going down, he finally acquiesced. So every six months, the last two checkups have been exactly the same. Hmm. So to me, and this is another thought, a lot of people, when they get diagnosed, especially with cancer, you think of it as uh, you're entering a fight, you know, put up your dukes, we're going to knock it out. And, we're going to, whatever we have to do, and the doctors are right there with their chemo and their radiation and their surgery, and, and you enter a war with your own body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't approach things that way. I believe you can live with cancer, and I believe you can live um, to a, in, in such a way like I am where it is, it is really kind of so stable and not growing that it becomes almost a non-issue. Wow. Um, for me, and it's not that it doesn't enter my mind, but it is not what I live, it's not what I'm about. And I think when you enter into a, a, a fight or a battle against your own body, be it the cancer or whatever disease, you end up, you, you're almost cut off your nose to spite your face in some cases. Absolutely. So do you feel like you pretty much stopped it in its tracks? I feel like, yeah, I, I, I never have had any symptoms. Uh -huh. uh, I'm fortunate um, in that it hasn't progressed at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, the numbers I have right now are pretty much almost exactly the same as probably, yeah, actually they are. They're about exactly the same as when I got diagnosed. Okay. So if five years in and someone tells you you're going to be dead in seven to ten years, your numbers are the same, yeah. I would call that a success. Absolutely. So what does your oncologist say about the developments in the past five years? <laughs> oh, you mean Mr. Textbook? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Well, Textbook. you probably shouldn't eat red meat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he says nothing. Yeah. The, his hands are tied, literally. And if he is to, he, I'm sure somewhere in his heart, he's 
He's happy. I can get him to laugh now. He likes to see me. I usually show up at the oncologist with my bike mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I ask him all kinds of crazy questions and talk to him about raw food and he just gives me a look. Um, he can't, see the thing is that he can't, in order to keep his, his, let's call it what it is, a business and to keep his license, he can't go and say, oh, well, your story is so compelling. Next time someone comes to see me and they get diagnosed with CLL, I'm going to tell them what you did and then they'll, they'll benefit. He can't. Mm -hmm. he can't. So really he doesn't say anything, but every time he cracks a joke with me, yeah. I love to tell him I'm going to go to his retirement party and he never huh. answers me. Huh. How old <laughs> he is he? He leaves the room and goes, see you in six months. Jeez. So, pretty huh. funny. Oh, so now what is your, your dietary style like at the moment then? At the moment, I am uh, eating a lot of fruit. Okay. Um, kind of following uh, something along the lines of a, of a Ray Pete. Style. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I'm a huge fan of Matt Stone at 180 degrees, and he's sort of uh, inspired me. It, basically, uh, it would be fruit, dairy, usually full fat, oh, yeah. uh, raw if I can get it. Fermented is awesome. Uh, and then I eat fermented foods like pickles or chutneys okay. or um, sauerkraut, whatever uh, is around. And I also uh, do eat some almonds. But these days, I prefer them roasted and salted. I, I've really come to believe that, especially, again, with an active lifestyle, salt, rather than being a bad thing, is actually a necessary thing. And if I don't have enough salt, I actually have more problems than if I have a little more on the salt side. But are you having um, chemical salt or like natural um, salt? Well, usually I go for sea salt, Celtic salt, that, that yep. type of a real salt um, yep. is, is what I prefer. Um, I avoid polyunsaturated fats. Such I as? It. Right. I, I don't, yeah, I'm really um, focusing on uh, lowering the, um, the omega-6s and upping the omega-3s. And that's really, besides that, uh, in my diet, the other mainstay of my philosophy is that I, um, I focus on the healthy fats. And I focus on um, eating things that are easily digestible, hmm. and it will give me energy, like like the fruit. Um, I do find though, if I go with too much fruit and it's just fruit, just fruit, it doesn't work so well for me. And I do much better when I throw in some heavy cream, so a piece of cheese, uh, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I've never had a problem with with good quality dairy, um, and then. Probably about two to three times a week, I'll have maybe some grass-fed beef or a salmon, okay. uh, shrimp type of a, a meal. Okay. Um, cooked, cooked veggies for the most part, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All what? my raw vegan friends will relate to this next statement. I'm really sick of salads. <laughs> really. <laughs> if I never ate another one, I'd probably be very happy. <laughs> don't eat much in the grain world. Yeah. Every once in a while, some white rice. Again, digestibility, and it's just good old starch. I love yams, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, plantains. Okay. Um, my sweetener of choice is uh, Anthony Anderson's honey <laughs> or uh, maple syrup. Actually, okay, yeah. I've been using a lot. Um, my cheat foods, I call them, but I don't feel bad about eating are uh, Lisa Marie Linden Schmidt's right chocolate, yeah. which is a spoonable decadence from heaven. So good. And um, things like. Um, Oh gosh, what are, dates, my organic dates from Pato's Dream. Sure. Those are like my candy. So for instance, this morning I can tell you I had some Greek yogurt with some strawberries and my um, chai tea with some cream. Um, and then uh, later on in the middle of my exercise, I had an apple and a bunch of dates. Okay. And when I got home, I took a zucchini that my neighbor grew in her yard and mixed it up with some Chafin Family Orchard's grass-fed beef and some homemade barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's pretty Yummy. much, that's how I roll. And you know? how have your children and your husband taken to the dietary styles? <laughs> that's a great question. When I started this, I, I knew that it was a bit extreme and my daughter was young and my stepdaughter was a teenager. And I said to myself, you're doing this to heal yourself. Yes, I'm cleaning up our food supply. But if my daughter, 
said, Mom, you know, I want a steak or a hamburger, or if it was Thanksgiving and there was a big turkey or any of that, that was fine. All I tried to do, and, and what I would encourage anyone to do, is to source out quality, grass-fed, wild-caught, pastured, the poultry, things of that nature, mm -hmm. um, and to use your good oils and to throw a lot of veggies and fruit in there, um, and your good dairy. Uh, yeah. But they took to it well because I didn't push them. There was a lot of fun with, hey, I'm going to make a smoothie. You want some? And getting her involved. And Well, actually, she made one of your desserts one time. Remember that? It was peach avocado. Oh, yeah. That was good, that right? Was the video. Sam's, made a, Sam's kind of slightly famous in the raw community. <laughs> her crazy videos and her, and her, her more. fondness of coming to raw food meetups and going, I hate vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. I, I believe that children shouldn't be forced at anything. Obviously, they don't have an illness. Now, if they had an illness, it may have acted differently. With yeah. my husband, I, I kept having him read books and I kept telling him, you know, you got to read this book. It's, you know, the, the angry cowboy or the, you know, and so on. And he read him and he goes, that's it. I'm vegan. So for a couple of years he was vegan. And then when I started eating meat, he got all upset at me and he said, I don't know what you're doing. I, I, are you sure? Should we be doing that? And so he feels better with a lower quantity of animal source products and he does not do dairy at all. Okay. So Again, what we do is we pretty much keep it um, to the to the vegetarian style things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I also we avoid soy, no soy in our house of any kind, um, and and wheat is pretty minimal too. Okay, but he's he's good. My husband's my rock. I mean, thank God for my husband and my children and my my friends. Um, all have been behind me. This whole time, no matter how crazy I got. Yeah, right. <laughs> and how many <laughs> juice I voice foisted on them. Here, you have to try this. And then they choked on the ginger. Yes. It, it's it's something, uh, it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could recommend maybe like two dishes that someone, if they wanted to, let's say just, a, you know, an omnivore that's eating kind of a standard diet, Something okay. that they could start making, which wouldn't seem like a sacrifice or a, or a big stretch. Something that would okay. make sense. The first thing I do is change your oil. Yeah. Some killer coconut oil. My favorite is uh, Tropical Traditions, the mm. refined expellered pressed, which mm. sounds counterintuitive. Why wouldn't you want virgin? Right. But when you're cooking, the refined is awesome. It has no coconut scent. It cooks up beautifully, and you still get those good omega fats. Um, I would change your oil. I would look at your sources. If you're gonna want a steak, get a an amazing grass-fed steak from Novi Ranch or um, Chafin Family Orchards or even Whole Foods has some. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, your highest source of of product. Buy from your farmers. Know your farmers. You know, Anthony knows that I even have a guy that I get macadamia nuts from. Yeah, and it's amazing. They're they're a lot of work. It's open, fun. But oh my gosh, they're good. Mm -hmm. And those are filled with omega 3s. Again, the good oils. I would say um, if you keep it simple um, and you stick to good, fresh, organic fruits and vegetables and good wild caught fish, um, free range chickens uh, and, and eggs and non soy, keep the soy away and keep away from your processed packaged foods. Yeah. You're going to be a, a light years ahead of the game. And I keep it real simple. Mm -hmm. you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, you've eaten over here. Sometimes a baked potato with some grass fed butter is a meal for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. awesome. Explore the yams. I love purple, purple yams. Um, there's Japanese. There's, uh, there's just, there's so many varieties and they're all delicious in their own way. Um, I would say if you're going to do smoothies, my favorite thing to do is to add coconut milk okay, or cool. any coconut oh, um, yeah. to a smoothie and just make it very creamy and, and rich and, again, full of great fats for your body. So I'm, you, I'm all about the fats. And you really like including <laughs> a lot of coconut products into your diet. What's that? You really like to include a lot of uh, coconut products into your diet, it seems. Uh, you know what? I, I, I especially like the oil. I use it on my skin. I, I use their cream as well. Uh, the baby silk, 
And um, as far as eating coconuts, though, buying young coconuts, no, I, I don't really. The coconut water is a big favorite yeah. around here. One recipe that's really great is uh, you take half of half coconut water and half coconut milk, and then throw a little bit of vanilla in it, and it makes the most delicious creamy drink. Oh, nice! And just keep it in the fridge, and and you can use it in smoothies or just drink it. Yeah. Um, especially if you have kids that don't want dairy or you don't want them to have dairy, mm -hmm. it's a great little sweet sweet milk. It's very good. Um, very cool. Gosh, I don't know. With vegetables, I'm pretty simple. I just saute them in olive oil or or coconut oil, or I have macadamia nut oil, which is awesome too. And just throw in some garlic and just saute it up. Yeah. Usually, I'll, I'll do another way to to get in all the goodies is take your greens and maybe some eggs or some grass-fed beef or, or some fish, some salsa, and just make a one-pan wonder I where like it all it. sort of is cooked together and and then you kind of hit all the bases oh that sounds so good it's very good <laughs> oh so with combined with the food what is your daily uh routine like as far as activities like uh on your feet kind oh, of stuff gosh. yeah um usually every morning anywhere um from six to seven i'm up for an hour run i usually try and throw in some sprints in there uh, or sometimes I go for a longer hour and a half, more of a slow, steady run. Mm -hmm. I um, ride my bike a lot. On Saturdays, I ride about 15-mile round trip to my best friend's house, and then we run, and then I go do weight class. I'm hitting up the weights about twice a week. Okay. I also really love yoga. I'll hit the yoga up, usually on my own, and I also have a class that I go to. Uh, I find the yoga very healing, very relaxing, and actually can build a lot of strength you know, um, with, with your arms and, and legs yeah. and flexibility. Um, those are probably my main things um, that I do regularly. So, yeah, every day I have anywhere from one to three hours of exercise a day. I feel it's key and specifically I think it's good for anyone to move. And I love to be outside. But in the disease that I have, um, it is of the lymph. And a lot of people don't realize that unlike your blood, which has a pump, the heart, to move it, lymph cannot move on its own. Mm -hmm. Lymph does not move, or as I like to call it, take out the trash unless you move. Yeah. And when you move, your lymph moves. Oh, I also do a lot. I love rebounding on the mini trampoline. Excellent. It's an incredible lymph uh, mover. Good for your bones, um, too. Yeah, yeah. All of the weight-bearing exercise, I'm all about that. Um, and I love lifting weights. I love being strong and, and feeling that, I guess, in a way, all of us, I mean, none of us want to say, oh, I'm getting older and, oh, one day, you know, I won't be able to do this. All of us want to be as capable and as strong and, and as vibrant as we can be. Mm -hmm. And I also uh, find that when I do the weights and when I run and when I... Uh, put myself out there and challenge myself, I just feel so much better uh, on, on every level. So yeah. uh, it's almost like a prescription for me. Yeah, oh, that's great. You know, I think uh, as, uh, along with the, um, the rebounder for the lymph, that's such a huge thing, but then as well, and I only heard this maybe like six months ago, was that the rebounder was kind of developed by NASA or something so they could build bone density on the astronauts after they came back from space because they right. would lose so much bone density in a few months. And so it, they got them on the rebounders. Right. And it was funny because if you look, there's some funny videos online of like, you know, I think it's like early 80s circa where they were trying to sort of promote the rebounder as mm. something that everyone would want to do. And I actually had one back in the day. Um, but yeah, that's I believe what it stemmed from is, is it is an incredible exercise, not only for your lymph, but your bones and your muscle and balance and all those things that, that I'm sure as an, an astronaut would need. Oh yeah, yeah. I know I wish, I, I kind of want to get one for my mom. I wonder if she would <laughs> stick with it, you know, because we have a big trampoline, but I think yeah. that you get a little more bang for your buck with the small ones and you can really get the direct pressure. It's not so big. They're and portable. Getting, yeah, and, and they're when portable, they're big, yeah. you have to have the um, guard around them. Sure, so sure. <laughs> you don't <laughs> want to break your mom's leg. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, so living, yeah. in, living in Southern California, have you found it easier to source 
organic veg and fruit um, compared oh, to yeah. your travels? Yeah, and you know what's an interesting thing? Um, another one of my philosophies is to always be open. Mm -hmm. I think there's value in everybody's um, opinion or lifestyle or, you know, I always, I love to meet people, I love to talk to people. And through that kind of na natural curiosity that I have, I've been able to say I'm at the farmer's market and my date guy says, you've got to meet this guy. He knows all about healing. He's healed his mother from cancer. I think it's now eight times. And so I meet him and then he has a friend who says, oh, you've got to learn about uh, kefir. I've got culture. I'll give you the, the grains. And then from him, I'm at the co-op with Steve, our little market. Mm -hmm. and, and from there, I meet and so on and so on. So, I, yeah, I'm very blessed that in California we're year-round yeah. with Farmer's Market. We're year-round yeah. with beautiful weather. Yeah. I hate to tell you that it's about 77 here right now. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's the, always <laughs> the nicest, <laughs> even in the summer. Uh. It's beautiful. So, so yes, um, it's very easy. Whole Foods is available. I have right. my co-op. I have my Farmer's Markets to choose from. Um, I could even do more than I do as far as getting... Um, good food, but we get so much good food, and we have great friends that cook good food. Um, mm -hmm. Like we have a friend, uh, Ma Jasmine's. They cook Indian food; it's all fresh. They use great ingredients, and you know, it's just. I just feel like every day, every moment, I'm always looking for that that beauty, that that next new great food, that next new place where I can source out the best possible things for myself and my family. Yeah. So California is definitely the place for that. Do you do a lot of citrus as well? Oh, in season. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much about season and obviously coconut is, you know, that's one of those I give myself a pass on foods. Yeah. But yeah. generally I go to my farmers and, and I know them all so well, you know, you've met them mm -hmm. and I'll just say, okay, what do you got? Oh, I have blueberries, but only for another week. Well, then I'm going to buy double, and then I, like I freeze it. half of them. That's cool. That's really and cool. And then I have them for smoothies or other things. But I just, if, if cherries are in season, I go for it, and I just eat a lot of cherries. And, yeah. you know, grapes are coming right now. Uh, we've mm. got some beautiful greens out right now. Asparagus is waning. Um, yeah, so citrus is still there, but I really prefer to get it right when it's, when it's ready. And that usually is the fall around here. Okay, okay. So. How do you cook your plantains? What's that? Do you cook your plantains or is it raw or oh, how do you? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in butter usually or coconut oil. Um, and then mm. um, I like to put uh, maple syrup on them or cream would be great, yogurt Whoa. would be great. Nice. I love plantains, they're wonderful. Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, I think we should get some plantains today, buddy. <laughs> You should. Make sure they're nice and black. Yes, that is the key. I actually had a raw one last week when we were talking. Oh, oh that's right. And, With your that, and how was it? That was good. It was very dark. It was like almost black. The peel was very brown. And it was good. It wasn't as sweet as a banana, like a but it was... It was like a, yeah, kind of like a sweet potato, but cooked. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I liked it actually more than regular bananas, for sure. There was more to it. It's Oh yeah, it's very. It's got a much richer dimension to it. Um, I, I think that uh, too. On that note, um, with fruit, uh, obviously that's probably one of the only fruits that I do cook. But mm -hmm. when it, with fruit, you know, I think eating fruit raw is probably preferable unless it's a starchy type of fruit like that, which is a little bit of an anomaly. Uh -huh. With vegetables, I've really come to believe that cooked vegetables are more available nutritionally. And, and better, easier for me to digest. Absolutely. So, so yeah. you know, you know, raw broccoli is not your friend. Mm -hmm. At least it's not mine. No, no. <laughs> raw, even the raw kales. I, I mean, I had a lot of digestive <laughs> issues that I kind of ignored because I thought it was natural. Right. And, and that's another thing I, I was going to talk about is this whole detox, you know. Well, you feel horrible because you're detoxing and... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think you do get a little bit of that when you start on a whole new diet, and especially if you've been like a McDonald's junkie. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel a little crappy. Yeah. But if detox, it goes on and on. No. Yeah. That's not normal. Hold tight one second, Deb. We're going to do a little message from our sponsors. 
<laughs> the Anthony Anderson Show, episode four, is brought to you by usgoldcoins.com, and that's 1-800-HOT-COIN. Andy Goss is the man. Check out his book, Uncle Sam Cooks the Books. It will change your life. And Mezzi Grill, really good Mediterranean food, uh, 55th and 8th in New York City. They accept Bitcoin, mezzigrill.com. And mountgox.com, that's mtgox.com. They trade in Bitcoin, British pounds, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars. Check them out. All right, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. back with Debbie Young of Grass Fed yes. Mama and Debbie Does Raw. And right. how, um, how would people want to get a hold of you? Like you want to go through Facebook? Are you pretty active oh. on Facebook? Yeah, I'm, I always say I'm so easy to find. I, I'm on Facebook all the time. Uh, you can ask any, anybody who knows me <laughs> under Debbie Young. Okay. It sounds, it's spelled how it sounds, Y-O-U-N-G. Okay. And uh, I'm on Twitter under Grass Fed Mama. Okay. Um, I have two. I'm a Gemini like you, Tony. Yeah, that's right. So I have oh. my original blog was Debbie Does Raw. Um, it's uh, Debbie Does Raw at blogspot.com. Okay. And it it turned into more of a journal, and there's some posts on there about you know why I'm no longer a vegan and things such as that. And then on Grassfed Mama, uh, which is also a blogspot blog, I um, focus more on bone broth, which is something I really got into um, once I flip the switch over to eating omnivore and um, the benefits and how to make them and mm -hmm. things like of that nature. Um, obviously from the name it's more about the omnivore side of things. I talk about some of the ranchers that I've met um, and things that I've discovered um, in that realm. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are four ways to find me. I, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty open. Yeah. Pretty open. When you make your bone broths, what's a? Do you add anything to it? How does that work? Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I found that adding fennel. Uh, I of course add the usual stuff, which is celery and onion and carrots. But uh, adding a fennel and some uh, occasional garlic, not usually too much. Okay. Uh, really makes a difference in the in the flavor. I really like that, and I have some mm. recipes on Grass Fed Mama for that. For me, the, the best broths usually are the best raw ingredients. Okay, so, okay. If you can get a good quality marrow bone from a good quality grass-fed rancher, you're going to have an excellent result every time. Do you like to bake the bones first? I've tried both. Uh, interesting. Uh, I think there's a richness of flavor that comes with uh, baking the bones, and there's also a brown uh, uh, coloring that uh -huh. the broth takes on, whereas if you don't, you, 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 it's more clear or white mm -hmm. uh, colored. So. Well, we'll have to make the bone marrow gelato sometime with the acai. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was that. something. <laughs> oh, wow, so cool. Uh, do, are, do you have any fruit trees in your yard? Oh, yes, I have a, a, a dwarf citrus, an orange, and then we have the, uh, we have the, the key lime, in the back, actually, it's a bear lime in the yeah, back that nice. our neighbor has. You've had those. And then that's I have my famous pomegranate tree, which is so frustrating. I've had it like three years and I got some flowers on it and they just fell off. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I did fish emulsion, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's I, just not, it doesn't like me. Well, pomegranates um, love the sun, they love the sun. So. I think that's my biggest problem with that one. Um, and then uh, I was telling you earlier, I'm going to head over and buy some fruit trees, and a persimmon would be great. A uh, peach, you can't get a peach the same as that you can grow in your yard. There's yeah. nothing better. If you um, see one called the mid pride peach, mid pride, uh, we tried that one, and it was so juicy and very yellow. And I, it nice. was just real juicy. Make sure you you kind of try them out before because you know it varies so much. Um, right. I, I remember when I was growing up, we had a peach tree in our yard, and uh, it was a yellow peach, and every summer it was just, mm. you know, you'd go peach crazy, and, and yeah. I, I want that. I want uh, some apple, too. And, and uh, other than that, I, I have a small garden, and I grew a lot of herbs, okay. and I grow strawberries and peppers and various little things. Um, so I, I, I'm definitely not a food forest, but I... with hope to one day be more of one 
and be able to eat a lot more out of my yard. And you've got those loquats too, which are really big. Loquats, huge loquat. I'm looking at it right now. And then there's a smaller loquat on the other side. Uh, yeah, huge loquats. Um, and and <laughs> I, I do, I, I confess, I forage when I'm running. So I'll uh -huh. be running and then I'll see a lime or, or an orange or a lemon on the ground and I'll stick it in my pocket. <laughs> or on my bike, I'll stop and throw it in my back. And, yeah. You know, Sorry, fruit tree owners. <laughs> well, you know, if it's falling on the ground, then it's pretty much uh, that's, open. Yeah, yeah, that's open season. Open yeah, season. <laughs> very cool. Um, have you been traveling at all this summer? Traveling, yeah. We went to Vancouver, British Columbia. That was gorgeous. Um, and then we went to Washington to Anacortes. They're a small town. And um, we're going to be going... Where else are we going? We're, go we're going to be going up north uh, to visit relatives near um, uh, Stanford area. Uh, my husband's going to be going to New Jersey, so Charles oh, cool. Balser, if you're watching this, I gave him your address. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, that's about it. Uh, my dream, of course, is to get to River Cottage and hang out with Hugh uh, Fernsley Winningstall and uh, <laughs> spend a week there. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. And to go to Ireland. Oh, yes. That's where your ancestors are from. Yes. I'm Irish, German, and Welsh. Okay. Okay. So, Did yeah. um, ancestral diet play, play into some of your considerations? Yeah, I, I did a lot of studying up on that, on, on paleo. Um, some of the paleo stuff I don't agree with. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, I think they're they're on the money with their no with the low grains or no grains. Yes. Uh, the no dairy, I don't really ag agree with, and not every paleo person is a no dairy person. Um, but yeah, um, actually, I I just got accepted. I'm volunteering at the Ancestral Health Sym Symposium. It's the first one. It's August fifth and sixth here at UCLA. Cool. And I'm super excited. They've That's got some so great cool. speakers. Uh, and. Um, I'll get to meet them, people like John Durant, Chris Master John, Melissa McEwen, um, I, Steve, Stephen Gunier is going to be, there's just a ton of people that I really admire. Um, the funny thing about when you get into the paleo side of things, unlike the raw side of things, uh, they're very scientific people and a <laughs> lot of them have a degrees in biochemistry and, and they really are serious about their, their nutrition and their research and it's fascinating. Yeah. So I've learned a ton from them. Um, so that's coming up. Oh, and then we're going to go to Hawaii uh, for, for Christmas to see my uh, in-laws and my uh, stepdaughter. Awesome food there. Just love yeah. the farmer's market. The fruits are off the hook. You can't get tropical fruit unless you're in the tropics. That really is worth eating, in my opinion. When, so, wait, when are you planning on going to Hawaii? End of December? Uh, Hawaii in December for Christmas vacation. Okay. Well, we'll have two full weeks then, so we're going to go for that. And, and uh, mostly Oahu? Honolulu, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. We go to the North Shore, too. It's okay. Fun. You know, I might, I might be there around that time. Oh, okay. You can hang with us, Uncle Tony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my friend, um, they're looking at 10 acres over on the Big Island in the Pune nice. area. Nice. And they um, are looking for people that might be interested that, you know, resonate with the whole, the Anastasia mission and, you know, all the food okay. forest stuff. And, and there's a chance that I might want to do something there, you know. So I think I'm going to go there around December or January and just check it out and see what's happening and maybe start something there because ideally I always wanted to do something year round, whether it was Southern right. California or, you know, cause you really want to be in your garden all the time and pulling food from it. But I right. always wanted to do Hawaii. So, um, Hawaii's perfect. It, it's beautiful. And, and the, and the big Island has that volcanic soil more, I think than the others, at least yeah. in certain areas. I haven't been to that Island yet. Oh, she but said it's, it's very powerful and everything just fertile. grows very yeah. well. Yeah, amazing. So uh, maybe maybe I'll see you there and we can hang out in Honolulu. <laughs> that would be really fun. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Can meet my in-laws. Oh yeah, right. We can have some um, roast pig. They love you. Do so, they? Uh, yeah. Um, do that, they eat pork? That, uh, that's something we've <laughs> talked about doing as well. Actually, is getting to Hawaii and staying there. We we haven't made a firm plan though. Well, even yeah. if you were to team up with your in-laws and get, um, you know, get a few acres and plant it out, yeah. and then they could yeah. just, um, whatever. I mean, there's things that can work. 
Yeah, it's beautiful there. I love it. I, I'm I'm a major outdoor freak, and I love it there. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's I just enjoy it every time. It, it, the big city isn't that great, but you know. Well, yeah, do. yeah. I mean, it's it's not a bad big city. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to no. do as far as I mean, it's pretty. <laughs> The beaches are gorgeous, yeah, and then, and then the, there's a farmer's market. We go to the Capilani Farmer's Market, and uh, it, it's wonderful. The food is amazing. I saw some stuff there last time I had never seen before. Mm-hmm. They had a sapote that was, oh. I don't know, five pounds. Whoa. It was, it was insane, and it was like black. Oh, yeah. You have to see it. it. It was incredible, and jackfruit and durian and any and every tropical fruit that you want is there. Yeah. So. The um, the vision of the other um, the other guy that wants to be on this ten acres in Hawaii uh, he wants to do a durian food forest of all these different kinds uh, of durians and then obviously you, he would plant stuff underneath but he wants the the canopy to be durian trees. Wow, wow, that wow. could be pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean it'll be a little bit of a wait, but uh, it would be so yeah. so cool. Uh, yeah. Well, it's worth the wait. If you can grow your own food, there's nothing like it. That's, to me, that's the best food on earth is yeah. the food you grow. Yeah. Just, you know, and, yeah. and put your own love into it. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. all the difference. So. Well, my mom, um, so far, she said she's picked 70 cups worth of raspberries. Wow. From, from the garden. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I'm so jealous. That's my favorite berry. <laughs> she, I think she puts um, maybe... It, she puts them in those large plastic bags, that, and she, uh-huh. I think she says she she gets about maybe five cups or six cups in every bag. But oh. she puts them on a cookie sheet and then freezes them so right, they right. so they stay nice and solid. And then um, and then she yeah puts them in the bags. So it's there's going to yeah. be a lot of raspberries when I get back. When are um, you going back? You know I'm not sure because it just it kind of depends on the the work here, and I really needed to focus on getting the income going again and I, uh, I'm, I just feel so blessed that they're there to pick the stuff and make sure everything's watered but maybe maybe September uh, we'll see I don't know maybe early September I'm not sure okay it's still a little hot there and kind of kind of humid so uh, and that honey, I, the honey that you gave me is so was so good yeah yeah really really amazing honey I can't wait for you to try the bee pollen too yeah that's another great food. I I, I have in the uh, right chocolate I got. Mm-hmm. It's the, uh, the one that she named after her husband, and it's um, I think it's conviction, and it's got a, uh, it's got bee pollen in it, and it's so oh, good. Cool. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really fun when when that starts happening, and and especially when you start meeting friends that really know how to make the good foods, and you start trading and doing cool stuff, and it just really right. opens up like a whole social circle. I, feel, I think it's an awesome idea. I think that food forest is the way to go. Yeah. Do you think you'd ever make it out east anytime soon? Uh, you know what? I don't know. I, I've, I've got a big project I'm working on that's going to happen in January, and I'm trying to bring all you East Coast dudes out here. Mm-hmm. And that's for a, a healthy food expo that I'm booking. Um, so I've got a lot of big names who are, are tentatively um, going to be involved. But, yeah, I should go. I, I, I've been to New York, but it's been a long time, and... Yeah. I need to see my friend just had a baby, and there's just, you know, it'd be really great to be there and hang out and see everybody that yeah. lives there. Yeah, because uh, there's so many of us that are back here now. So I know. You guys keep moving every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's how really us young, that's how us young folks operate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. Where, do you see, um, where do you see things going in the next couple of years with your path and your... With me? Um, that's a good question, and it's funny that you ask because things have sort of taken off even in the last week. Mm-hmm. I've got the Healthy Food Expo. We don't have a name yet, but I, I'm booking it in conjunction with the Fit Expo at the LA Convention Center at the end of January. And what I'm doing is focusing on bringing together the best of raw, paleo, Weston A. Price, real food. Cool. Uh, Chefs, cool. uh, vendors, uh, speakers, so people like Philip McCluskey, Jamil, yourself, hint, mm. hint, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just making it where we all come together under one roof and no one has to feel like, oh, you know, there's the raw food festival and there's the meat world and that everybody can realize that by choosing from all these different things, you're going to have your optimum health. 
So that's really a passion for me. I also have really taken a lot of time to think about writing a book and what that would look like. And I'm starting to gel with ideas where I can start to yeah. really um, put pen to paper. And I have a friend that we're going to meet up about once a month and work on writing together. So um, that's a couple things that I have going on. Very cool. And you see yourself say, staying in the Southern California area? Yeah. I got to. My baby's in school. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't pull her. I don't know if her out. That. <laughs> Perfect attendance her whole life. Oh after. yeah, oh yeah. And I and I, we're just so blessed. We love our where we live. We love our neighbors. We love the the climate and the availability of good food and everything that we that we are so lucky to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, with Sam, have you ever thought about doing homeschooling with her? I have. I've I've threatened that, uh, especially middle school. Uh huh. Because <laughs> middle school scares the crap out of every parent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because all these kids I show up crazy. and there's like 10 times more kids and they all have hormones now and they look scary and their voices change and whoa. So, but yeah. you know what? Sam's, a, you know Sam. She handles herself really well. She has very, very many friends. Um, we have a great uh, network of families that we all support and look out for each other's kids and I think she's going to be okay, but I will say that if I saw that there was a problem, especially anything having to do with bullying or or any kind of behavior that I felt was dangerous, I'd yeah. pull her out in a heartbeat. Yeah. 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 So. Very cool. Very cool. So tell I, folks again. How, oh, yeah. What's up? Oh, nothing. I, let's go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. You're going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> now I forgot. Ah. No, I, was, I was just going to say uh, that I think, I, well, homeschooling is very difficult. Though. Yes. And I, I, I know what I was going to say. I would rather that it was more her choice. I see. A, that she said, yes, that's best for me. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I would have to take it on as well because that's a full-time job beyond what I already do as, as a work-at-home parent. So, um, yeah, I have friends at home school, and I admire them tremendously. I, I, I know that it's a, it's, it's a great gift to give to your kids. Um, at this juncture, though, for her, if I pulled her away from all her friends, I, I, it, it could be detrimental to her. So yeah. I, I, if she, if it's necessary, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. So Very cool. Well, we'll definitely have to have you back on for round two and then some updates okay. and everything. And uh, I'd love to hear maybe some more recipes and some cool things like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just make stuff up on the fly, Anthony. That's cool. That's the way it should be. The fridge. That's mm -hmm. what we're having. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nice. I don't, I don't, I tried all the complicated stuff, especially in raw, and it always, if it came out good, it was a miracle, and then it always frustrated the hell out of me, and so mm -hmm. I would just, I would just make up stuff and just do it to my taste. Yeah, so. yeah. It's better to keep it simple and... Yeah. No, I feel that for sure. Okay, tell folks how they can get a hold of you one more time. Okay, if, if you want to talk to me or friend me, you can friend me on Facebook, uh, Debbie Young. And uh, my Twitter account is under Grassfed Mama. Okay. My blogs, which will, if you go to the blog, it's probably easiest because you'll be able to link to Grassfed and to, um, Facebook. I'm sorry, to uh, Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to www.debbydoesraw.blogspot.com or www.grassfedmama, and that's M O M M A, mm -hmm. at blogspot.com. Okay. And you can find me. I'm really easy to find. I love to help people if you have questions or need guidance or have some, a loved one that perhaps is facing a similar challenge to what I ha am or have. Uh, I, I'm always available for help. Yeah. I don't sell anything. I don't charge. I am just, I just mm -hmm. am so grateful to be here and to be able to help people that it, that's, that's my payment. Mm -hmm. so. And you're a really good hairstylist. Thank you, Anthony. You're my so favorite client. If you're, if anyone's in the Southern California area, it's worth the drive to Pasadena <laughs> to have Deb cut your hair. <laughs> It's a in-home salon. It's just one chair. It's just me. So you kind of have you get you get like stuck in a room with me for a bit. But uh, so you get the full we, download. We now. love it. It's it's the perfect job for me um, to be home and to be around and to be able to take care of my health and to do things like this and not have to stress out about going off to work. So yeah, 
Yeah, very cool. That's that's a, like a huge inspiration for me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, Deb, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Thank uh, you for having me, bro. Lots of love, sis. <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> See you really soon, Deb. Okay. Big love hugs. You. Bye. 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 <laughs> ah. See, I wonder now if it's going to